Hey guys, this is Phil. I'm a Grandmaster in Fix, Progressive, and 1v1s. On my channel, I try to show many different game modes and styles. In this game, I'm playing a six-player fixed game on the classic map with blizzards. These blizzards are considerably game-changing because if you see, there's a blizzard in Alaska that essentially um, cuts the, the map in half from going to the eastern and western hemisphere through that border. Uh, I noticed that right away. I also noticed that I'm very spread out. So a lot of times when I'm spread out, what I'll do is I will try to conserve troops as much as possible. Uh, if you noticed, I was at 13 troops before the start of my first turn. So really bad. Um, so and also, Australia a lot of times can be a trap. So what I did was I added troops to um, Siam and moved away. It looks like Tan are immediately uh, bought it out or didn't ready up. So we ended up with a five-player game, and so did Purple. We ended up with a four-player game with two bots in this one. Um... Australia does look like a, a continent I can get, and it looks like no one else is going for it because blue is going for South America and green is going for Africa. Um, so, you know, even though Australia is a trap, if nobody else is going for it, it's not a terrible idea to take it. Um, and if you can take it early and get that plus two, then... Uh, it can add up over time. And the reason why you see a lot of people loving Australia is it's so far away from everybody else. So it looks like yellow is trying to go for North America. It's not a bad idea because there's two borders to guard, which makes it a lot easier to hold than three. Um, but with the South America border, uh, blue getting South America so early, I just don't know if they're ever really going to hold it. Uh, and then also there's a lot of occupation from other people in that continent. Green's taking their time getting uh, Africa. The bots are really giving them trouble. And I kind of wonder if these were human players, if they'd be able to get it earlier. Maybe they'd get broken, but they would get it earlier. And this allows blue to kind of pull out to a lead. Uh, but because green's being so conservative, they're not too far behind them. Yellow takes their time a lot of times with their turns. I have that four in North America I'd like to be able to do something with. So I'm really hoping that I can get a take out of it. One way to use uh, troops, you can consolidate them together by slowly moving them together. But another thing you can do is you can um, use them to get takes. And so you're transferring wealth from one part of the world to another, basically. But I took this time to take Australia. Blue could probably trade in and break me. And so, you know, I kind of have to worry about that. But I thought it was a good time to to start getting in the game. I didn't feel like blue was gonna trade in and break me because they had to worry about green, right? So a lot of times it's kind of like a magic trick, make them look one way, then do something somewhere else. Um, so a lot of times when someone's focus is somewhere else, that's the perfect time to go ahead and take what you want. So green has that huge army next to blue, but they don't have Africa. So this whole time I'm kind of wondering, like, what are you doing, right? Like, are you just trying to keep blue from expanding, or do you want it in the future? Yeah, I'm really considering trading in um, to kill, either try to kill purple or I could also trade in just to stay alive. Is When you have a lot of cards, either in progressive or fixed, and 
somebody is within striking distance of you, you want to be kind of weary and maybe trade in early um, to stay alive. You, you want to kind of consider the pros and cons. Like, is somebody going to kill me? Can somebody kill me? Should they kill me? So a lot of times I go through this checklist in my mind. Um, and that's one of the things I do. Should I kill somebody? Should somebody kill me? Um, can they kill me? Can I kill them? Uh, and then after I've asked those questions, then I say to myself, okay, well, um, do I need to trade in my cards? Should I trade in my cards? I weigh the pros and cons of that. And then on top of that, I say, okay, well, how do I get myself in a better position in this game? Um, and better position doesn't always mean stronger player. Sometimes better position means that you're killing somebody, maybe making yourself a little weaker, but then you have less people to fight. Um, so, for instance, if I could kill yellow in this game, then there's only three human players left, and um, we could balance each other out. So if blue got too strong, green and I could attack blue and bring him back down so that he doesn't get more than both of us combined, where he can just take his armies and throw them into us, win the game, and only have to battle the bots. So taking out one player greatly increases your chances, um, especially a human player. Uh, and taking out bots, I like to do that as well. You know, you'll see what I mean in a little bit. But I think if you can take out bots, it's not too costly. It's not going to cost you the game. Then I do like to take out the bots, even if it makes you a little bit weaker uh, in a three or four player human player scenario. Because um, taking out a, a bot removes the noise. And it allows players to just focus on each other and stop worrying about being invaded by the bots, attack, attacking the bots, and then humans can get to attacking each other. I especially like doing that when you can be away from the action. So if, like, if yellow and blue share a border and I can clear the noise for blue, like take out the bots that are by them, then what's blue's focus on? It's going to be on yellow and not on the bots that it has to protect against. Same thing for yellow. If I can clear the bots that are by yellow, what's yellow's focus on? It's going to be on blue, the person right across the border from them. A lot of times what you notice is people worry about proximity quite a bit. Who's close to them? Um, that's not necessarily always the best way to play because the person way on the other side of the map could be the one that you really should be worried about. But I think that it's just a part of psychology is, you know, like what's right in front of you. Um, and that, you know, those are the easiest things to notice. And that's why people will always worry about the people right over their border. They worry about the big army that's, you know, kind of close to them, etc. In progressive cards, you'll see you may have like an eight in Asia that you have no intention of taking Australia. But the Australian turtle player, a newer player, may say, man, I hate this eight. It might break my border at some point in time. And it'll go and kill your army for no reason, making themselves weaker and yourself weaker and allowing someone else to win the game. Um, and that's kind of that proximity thing, you know. They feel threatened by what's close to them, even though something way across the map could actually be more dangerous. So that's, yeah, that's kind of one of the reasons why I'll, I'll take, out, take out bots, especially if I'm away from the action, in order to try to cause the people that are right next to each other, like blue and yellow in this scenario, to fight each other. Green's still no continuing. Um, it's almost like this is what they want to do. At first, they looked like they wanted Africa. Uh, but then they sit and they know Kana for a long time. 
I have no idea why Green decides to attack both the bot and Yellow like this. Um, it would make sense to me if all of Yellow's troops were cleared out of Asia because then Yellow couldn't do anything. They couldn't get any takes anywhere, and that would pretty much force them to either just turtle without getting cards or go after Blue. I like what Blue did here. Killing the bot. Kill the bot, get their cards, get the instant trade, expand, maybe possibly hold Africa. They have a really strong border against the yellow player as well. And if I were them, I would be thinking, what do I do about this person on my border? You either have to really beef up that border or um, remove your 26 all the way or you know, not guard it very well. You just don't want yellow at some point in time to get the crazy idea that it would be a good idea to trade in and attack over that border and take out your biggest army. So you kind of have to weigh those options as well. And, and purple had two cards and not very many troops. So I went and I took them out. Now it's just the four human players that remain and yellow is quite weak compared to us. Well, green is weak as well. Um, so I'm considering where to fortify my army. I don't really want to go all the way back to Australia because then I'm just trapped and if action happens, which it appears to be happening with this cold war between blue and yellow on the North American, South American border and with green being so aggressive towards yellow. Um, so I wanted to have this external army in order to strike. So my 11 and my 31 can strike Asia and my 31 can go strike the rest of the world, rest of the world. That works pretty well, but the risk of doing this is someone breaks my Australia and then I either have to spend troops after just losing troops to get Australia back or I have to go no continent and I've taken a hit in Australia. So, you know, there's pros and cons to everything, but having your armies unblocked so that when it's time to take action, you don't have to wait a turn to unblock them is pretty valuable. And here I'm just uh, taking cards, building armies, making sure no one can break my Australia with a single trade-in. So what I do a lot of times is something I call intermittent turtling. I think I coined that phrase. I've, I don't think I've ever heard anybody else use it, actually. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about that, and that's why I labeled this. So you'll see... Um, at the beginning of the game, I conserved troops and made armies, and then I took over, so turtling there, and then I took over Australia, so I made a big action and took over Australia, and then I turtled, 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 and got big, then I made a big action and I took out the bot, and then here I turtle, turtle, turtle. So you, you sit and you build with your income until the right opportunity comes. It's kind of like investing. Um, you know, you, you need to have a nest egg in order to do uh, what you want to do. I really... I like what I do here. I take out yellow completely from Asia, which means yellow has nowhere to go. So they either have to go into blue or um, green has to give them a card or they don't get a card. 
So I basically signed the death warrant for Yellow here. And the only way they could get out of it is by blue or green letting them out. And I can sit on the other side of the map and just chill, just hang out, not have to worry. I kind of feel like blue didn't like that action because they see that there's that 19 next to their 28. And so they moved a big army over here, um, just considering like uh, maybe possibly attacking me. All the while, blue's getting pretty big compared to us. At some point in time, someone needs to kill yellow, basically. And if I'm blue, honestly, I think I'm the one killing yellow. I'm the strongest player, yes, but I could kill yellow and then be in a three-player situation. Because right now, you know, I could strike blue and then they'd still have to defend against yellow and green. So if they went all out against me, they'd just be stuck. I thought at this point in the game that I was just done. I was going to just delete this recording and be done. This was a couple weeks ago. Um, and as you'll see, it doesn't even reconnect after the first 20 attempts. And I was very frustrated <laughs> because I was so far into the game. I liked how the game was progressing. Um, I thought it was, it was interesting. And I, I tried to reconnect again. And that's the video. That's the end. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that would be funny if that was, that was all there was. But obviously I reconnect to the game. In the middle of my turn. Uh, yeah. Frustrating. So I just get a take and I pass. As quickly as possible. So that I can get a card that turn. But I don't think I would have done much more anyway. I'm definitely not taking Asia. Because Blue wouldn't let me hold it. And green here is hitting yellow. They're allowing yellow to get cards. Um, I think what they're doing is they're trying to get blue to use their troops to kill yellow. Saying, hey, let's get this player out of the game. So I like what green's doing. Green and, and me basically helped to kill yellow and blue could have really sped up this game by exhausting some of their resources to take yellow completely out. You know, move some troops over to the border enough so that they could kill them. But they decided to just turtle for many turns as well. I don't have access to yellow, otherwise I would have helped. Because I like to progress games. And I don't think necessarily green should have given me access here. Um, because what they're really hoping to do is like dwindle down yellow and, and let, let blue take them out. Can't remember if yellow bots out here or not. We'll have to watch their turn. Because leaving big armies next to green's big army is a terrible mistake. Here we go. Blue finally decides to do something. And kill yellow. I like this move. I think they should have done it before. They can stay the strongest player. And I think that if they would have access, they could have killed green at this point and maybe even won the game with with cards and first striking me but i don't know maybe not because i have both of my army armies deployed all right so you'll see green kind of intermittent turtles as well um because here they take 
North America. They were doing nothing, doing nothing, kind of getting takes and chipping away at yellow. And then they took North America. I don't like where they put their army. It's very passive. Um, and basically blue can hit them and they can't do anything for a turn, which you see them do here. Splitting the eights. So I don't understand what blue's doing right there either. Because, you know, like, if I punch an eight, they lose an eight. It doesn't make their game better. And here I unlock green. I unlock green um, because green just got invaded. And a lot of times, right away, people are emotional. And if you can give them access, they'll kind of, you know, do the dirty work for you. And I thought they were going to um, hit the 28, but they went around. And I think they smartly moved because I think, you know, blue had been holding this and maybe blue would have double tapped them, which would have... Um, you know, at least ruined their game. They would have very low chances of winning and would have made it so that it was very possible that I could start taking action. And so blue and green have attacked each other and I've remained out of the fight. And I added there because I was thinking about attacking blue but then I realized, well, you know, maybe green will do it again for me. And they didn't. They, they took no action. They were saying, hey, red, hey, Phil, like, I'm not doing all this. Like, if you, wanna, if you want to team up against blue, that's fine, but I'm not doing everything. I'm the weakest player. At this point, Blue is getting really close to having more than both of us combined. <coughs> so I have to really consider what action I'm taking. But their borders are properly guarded. So I'm regretting not hitting them a turn earlier. And what you're seeing me think is, should I bust through that 21 with my 49 and shake up this game? So I decided to take Asia, you know, if I can hold it for a turn and keep blue away, then the game will be pretty balanced. Green just passes their turn again. Not even getting a card. I think, I think it's probably better to get a card in this scenario. Blue got an incredible roll there. But, but we have less troops. We'll, we're still in the three-player scenario. And um, blue is not as overwhelming against us. Again, there's a lot of decisions to make. Like, do I keep battling blue? How long do I keep battling blue? Um... How mad do you want to make somebody, etc.? And at this point, I was like, well, I hope that I can get green back in the game just by backing off. And green passes again. Yeah, so the trick they used on me was like, hey, I've done my dirty work. So if you don't do anything, then we're both going to lose the game. And being uh, the weakest player, you know, they had forced my hand. Um, and so by me pulling back to Australia, I was really hoping that even if they attack me and get a card, the green would do something. I really don't want to see blue get much stronger. So I keep attacking them to Africa. I'm basically saying, "Hey, you can have one of the, you can have one continent, but I'm not allowing you to sit here and get stronger than both of us combined, while Green's just sitting there." And 
Blue really wants both continents, though. They keep taking it back. Which I think is a mistake because, you know, I've basically broke them over and over and over again. And when I didn't break them, Green broke them before that. So, you know, they're just, they're just wasting troops by getting into wars with us over and over and over again. So I don't, I don't think that taking the continent over and over and over again is really their best choice. And I'm getting all these attacking advantages on their armies. So at this point, I'm actually taking the lead just by breaking blue and by green just doing nothing. I keep checking to see if green has left the game because if green's left the game, then I would fortify my army over and get into a full-on war with blue. It kind of worries me that it, green would lose would leave the game at this point because even though I have the lead... Um, blue could um, first strike me and then and then um, basically you know they're, they're way over there my 41 is blocked but green didn't leave the game they must just be like sitting watching TV or something like taking a time out from the game they did it turn after turn after turn. Just not participating in the game. But it's not working for them. If you notice, there's still 20 troops behind. They finally take some action. Blue's greedy the whole time. They're an expansionist, so... I notice different behaviors among newer players, you know, maybe experts are below or intermediates are below. I got a terrible role there. Um, so at this point, I'm wondering, is... Oh, green did bot out at this point. That's why I went after blue so hard. I forgot about that. And green let me hold Asia. This is the turning point in the game. Blue's attacking me, but I mean, what can you really do here? So it's proper to make sure that you break into all of their territories and that's what I do and I fortify my army over I have this big buffer of green protecting me so if blue wants to hit me they have to hit through green I didn't expect to hold Asia Africa I didn't expect to hold like any of this except for maybe Australia and I'm basically just going to follow blue and they don't have much that they can do they have to either Attack through green. Yeah, or hit me and then move over. I don't think attacking a 16 of green is the proper choice. But what can they do? I mean, they're pretty much done. If this is a ranked game and I'm blue and I'm in this scenario, I'm asking red, which is me, to attack green, and I'm throwing a ton of troops into green because you're losing the game. I'm blocking them again, forcing them to punch through green. I'm just basically using this bot to my advantage. And I know that I'll probably hold Australia for a few turns because the green bot will probably want to take Asia. At this point, I already have the game won. 
And I basically just need to punch blue with everything I got. So I manual roll to get this army down as small as possible. And then I got another bad roll there on blue. That was a 67% chance. So I've gotten a couple bad rolls here on blue in the end game. Um, but I'm still fairly confident that I'm going to win. It just may be difficult because if blue trades in cards and clears me, then I'm way on the other side of the map. But at this point, they don't have cards on four. And I know I'm going to win. All right, I take out blue, get two trades, and I'm behind on the bot, but not by much. Bots are easy to beat. I make sure to break their continents, take as much as possible. So bots will not make one big army and take as many territories as possible. So when you take as many territories as possible, on a bot, you'll get the territory bonuses and you'll slowly um, start to gain an advantage just with territory bonuses. And then a lot of times you'll see they just let you hold continents as well. So just, you know, be very aggressive, but make sure that you can get uh, attacks and cards. And there we go. That's a GG. Please subscribe and follow.